What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the next Crack a Pack episode. Today we're opening up, uh, for the first time in a long time, not the first time ever, but we're opening up a pack of Modern Masters 2017 edition. Uh, I believe the initial packs that we opened on this uh, little mini series, whatever you want to call it, uh, was um, it was just a bunch of Modern Masters packs because that's just all I had laying around and I didn't order anything. So uh, this is sort of a return to the very beginning, the inception, if you will, uh, of the Crack a Pack series. Lots of really good stuff in here. Obviously, uh, it is a master set. Sitting at the top, we have Liliana the Veil. We have Cavern of Souls, we have all of the fetch lands, which are fantastic, Snapcaster Mage, Tarmogoyf, endless, endless value, tons of great stuff. Hopefully we get something great in this pack. Uh, oops, sorry for moving the camera. Uh, as always, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario. We'll do our best uh, to figure out what our, our actual draft pick would be. Uh, I can't promise I'll do the best. I, I'll, I'll do the best I possibly can is my takeaway. Uh, I'm not going to be good though. So we'll see what we can get. Uh, our first card here, Penumbra Spider. It is a 2-4 for 2 and 2 green. It has Reach. Uh, and when it dies, you put a 2-4 Black Spider creature token with Reach uh, into play. I think this card is actually really good uh, in just the green decks. It's basically a two for one always. It also has reach, so it's going to be able to defend you really, really well. Uh, yes, it's a two four for four, so it's not like super powerful, but that reach is really important. And the fact that it just dumps out another spider as soon as it dies is great. So uh, not necessarily a first pick card by any means, but I do like this card a lot. Uh, Talon Trooper is a 2-3 for 1, a white and a blue, and it has flying. Pretty basic creature, but again, really, really good. 3-drop, uh, 2-3 three, three flying, perfectly fine. Uh, it is a little bit harder to cast, obviously. It's got two colors, but in general, it's it's going to be a fun card to play. Uh, I also should mention very quickly, because this is a master set, most of the cards are going to be like decent cards. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, Core Sky Fisher, another great card. 2-3 two, for 2. It has flying, and, whenever, and when it enters the battlefield, return a, per return a permanent you control to its owner's hand. Uh, bounce effects were really, really big in this set. There was a lot of like flicker abilities, things like that. Uh, Core Sky Fisher is very much a key part of uh, that deck, for sure. Uh, Gruel Gilgate, uh, it enters the battlefield tapped, and it taps for red and green. Uh, obviously, fixing is important in this set because there's a lot of gold cards. This The Gilgates are perfectly fine. I like picking them up. I don't like picking them up this early, uh, but once you have an established color combination, or if you're looking to splash a color, Gilgates are a great way to do it. Uh, Hungry Spriggan, it's a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a green. It has Trample, and when it attacks, it gets plus 3, plus 3 until end of turn. This card's fine. It's not my favorite. Uh, I do like it in just sort of a red-green aggressive deck uh, because hopefully on turn four it's going to be getting in for a good bit of damage and it does have trample. Uh, the only problem with it is because it's not always a 4-4, it's very easy to remove. Uh, and so for that reason I don't like it, but in general it is a powerful aggressive creature for sure. Uh, Night Terrors, sorcery for two and a black. Target player reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-land card from it and exile it. Uh, excuse me. Good because it's exile, but uh, at three, there's just more important things you should be doing uh, than pulling a card from the hand. Yes, it's a powerful effect. I get it. Uh, you can pull a very good bomb, but sometimes you're just not going to hit anything all that important. And when it comes to draft, you really want to be affecting the board state and progressing your game plan. Uh, and so I don't like that card. Rootborn Defenses, an instant for two and a white. Uh, it has Populate and creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. Populate says uh, you create a token that's a copy of another creature token that you already control. Uh, this card's great in the token strategy, great with Penumbra Spider, things like that. Uh, in general, this is not a card I'd want to pick up early at all, uh, but if I did have a very go-wide token deck strategy, uh, I wouldn't mind having one, probably just one of these, uh, but it is definitely a powerful card. Uh, Spire Monitor, a 3-3 for 4 and a blue. It has Flash, so you can play it anytime you can play an instant, and it also has Flying. Uh, this is just like a decent blue creature. Uh, flying threat, perfectly fine. You can ambush something with flash, again, perfectly fine. Uh, but aside from that, it's not that amazing. It's not super powerful either, uh, but for five mana, you get to play at instant speed. I think it's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Madcap Skills is an enchant creature for one and a red. The enchanted creature gets plus three, plus oh, and has menace. 
Uh, this reminds me of Gate Crash and like the return to Ravnica block because there was a black red aggro deck that just had madcap skills and like a bunch of little like Rakdos Shred Freaks and Rakdos Cacklers. Just a ton of little fellas that got in there for a lot of damage because of cards like this. Uh, definitely powerful in that sense, not as good in draft. Uh, not that great. Obviously, it still opens you up for the two for one that I always talk about with Enchanted Creatures, uh, but in general, I don't like this card. Uh, Eyes in the Skies, uh, three and a white for an instant. Create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying and then populate. Uh, again, this is a fine card in a populate deck, uh, not a card that would make me want to be in a populate deck. Uh, four mana for a 1-1 one, one bird, uh, and then potentially only ever copying just that bird. <laughs> Uh, doesn't seem that great to me, though, uh, if you do have another creature token out that's powerful enough, this could get out of hand very quickly. So I do like this card, but again, only if I'm already in that deck. Uh, Might of Old Croza is an instant for one green. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If you cast this during your main phase, that creature gets plus four, plus four until the end of the turn instead. Uh, definitely a powerful card in Infect, not as great uh, in Draft. It's... Okay, I mean, it's a decent combat trick by all means, but uh, I don't particularly like that, especially not first pick. Uh, Torn of Souls is a sorcery for four and a hybrid, either black or red. Uh, return up to one target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield if black was spent to cast Torn of Souls. Uh, creature's target player controls gets plus two plus zero and gains haste until end of turn if red was spent to cast Torn of Souls. Uh, if you tap both of the colors, you get both of the effects. This is obviously a hugely powerful card. Uh, I never technically drafted the Reanimator deck, not really, uh, but this is definitely a reason to be in it. Uh, hugely powerful card. Gaia's Anthem. Uh, creatures you control get plus one, plus one. It's an enchantment for one and two green. Uh, perfectly okay in a token deck. Uh, generally speaking, I wouldn't want this card in draft. Uh, but it is a powerful effect, and you can definitely get some extra mileage out of this card that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. Gives a lot of extra buff to a lot of creatures if you are in that token deck, so it can be hugely, hugely powerful. Uh, not necessarily a first pick in my mind, though. Uh, and then our rare is Terminus, sorcery for four and two white. Put all creatures on the bottom of your uh, of on the bottom of their owner's library. Excuse me. Uh, you can also miracle it for one white, so you can cast it for its miracle cost when you draw it. If it's the first card you drew this turn, uh, definitely a powerful ability. Not good in draft. Uh, it's just not. I don't think uh, miracles is a very very uh, finely tuned constructed deck, uh, and this is great in that constructed deck. In limited, you're going to be bouncing your own stuff. You're going to be bouncing their stuff. It's just, it's not a great thing. I don't like it. Uh, Agent of Masks, 2-3 uh, three for 3, a three, white and a black. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses one life, and you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Uh, I actually do like this card quite a lot. Uh, it's very, very powerful, and obviously uh, it puts you in a black-white kind of strategy. Uh, that might honestly be the pick. Uh, not a ton else. Uh, Torn of Souls is a pretty sweet card for sure, uh, but I think I would probably take the Agent of Mass. It's just a really powerful card. Uh, if it sticks around for a few turns, you're going to be gaining and dealing quite a lot of life, uh, which is fantastic. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything of any like real value, which kind of sucks. Uh, it's a master set, so you always kind of hope for it, but that's okay. Hopefully, we'll get some more of these and we can open up something really, really awesome like a Lily or a Tarmogoy for a Scalding Tarn or something awesome. Uh, but, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. As always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. We've got tons of it, all of it there for you. Enjoy it. Uh, but with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next episode.